you know, one of the golden rules, right, in life is, if, you know, is that it's like treat others like yourself, like you want to be treated, like, you know, the golden rule, treat your neighbor like you want to be treated yourself. And I think the more we kind of concentrate on that, we'll be a better um, human beings and, and society would be better for it. Now, let's move over to something a bit more, you know, a bit more um, fun. Um, and um, this is, um, I'm going to, the reason I'm bringing this up is because it's got to do with wrestling, something I enjoy and I watch as a part of a, uh, and Stephen, I'm going to bring your, um, your comment up in a sec. Um, I just, I saw it earlier on and I forgot, but I just noticed again. So um, now, and actually we'll bring safe up and we'll have a look at that as well, because I haven't, I can't remember if I've seen that trailer or not. So this is Suburban Commando uh, from the 90s. And one thing, um, this is just a clip from it. And the reason I'm playing this is because of a little uh, Undertaker, uh, and I'll play it in low volume so we can, I took over it because I don't want to get, you know, see how it goes. So, I was the video where Hulk Hogan was being interviewed, right? And Hulk Hogan is a guy who who just lies for the sake of, like, who doesn't even realize he's lying a lot. And he's been caught out so many times. But, we, you know, we know he's a big personality and so on. But he's also been someone who's like been outed as being someone who's anti helping other people he's all in, has been an all for himself allegedly right and so just i watched a documentary uh kind of like like an interview with jesse ventura from like uh from the original predator right and he was saying about how hulk hogan basically when jesse was saying hey you know what we should do we should have a union so that we can actually help the wrestlers so that they don't end up dying or getting hurt without any conversation and that their families are left with huge bills or they're like left without any you know sort of like um retirement fund right for the kids to come up with and hulk hogan jesse says outright is the one who went to vince mcmahon who is as you will know right now it's dirt bag when it comes to wrestling went to hulk i went to just i uh, went to vince mcmahon at wwe at that time with wwf and said and knocked on jesse wanting to do a union for wrestling in america right especially in wwe now as you've watched uh the history of wwe and wrestling in general uh especially in america because i mean that's where you know everybody gets to see all these big names and stuff right so many people have been hurt so many people have later on like you know been concussed and died nearly you know i still think about how um uh, the rock right dwayne johnson nearly killed you know uh, and basically destroyed uh what's his name the sock guy i can't remember his name i always forget his name uh you know hunt um Steve, if you know, let me know, man. I can't remember his name. Um, but it just talks about like how, you know, the things that happen in the ring and outside the ring, and now we hear about so much that's happening. So this, this here uh, is, uh, you know, the Suburban Commando, right? Getting back to Hulk Hogan, being who he is, right? Say, um, he had this little comment in an interview where he said, like, at that time, in the 90s, when he was Hulk, Hulkamania is running wild, brother, you know? A producer, a big name movie producer, like Hollywood producer said to him, you're out, you're going to be out, you're basically John Wayne, right? And... And when you look at Hulk, Hulk Hogan's movies, they're nowhere over five, right? They're like, they, like and I'm, by that, I mean here, by people, right? Uh, they're chosen to be over five. Sorry, uh, let me change that. Um, here we go. So, yeah, his movies are nowhere over five, right? And I think the... And 
Cheers, dude. I'll, I'll, I think I'll bring them up. I, 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 it's on the tip of my tongue. I just can't remember it on the tip of my head, whatever. But like Hulk Hogan's movies have never been, you know, award winning, let's just say that. And to, for Hulk Hogan to, hey, you Nugget, know, and for Hulk Hogan to think that he's like, uh, he was supposed to be John Wayne, brother. You know, like someone's basically telling him lies. You know, and of course, maybe Hulk Hogan himself allegedly is telling lies here in this interview. You know, where he goes, "Oh, you know, they wanted me to be this and that," and I'm and I'm like, you know, he talks about how like um, I couldn't handle that because it just I don't like the waiting twelve hours a day and having to just go to do four hours, uh, four minutes of video shoot, and then I'm away again. And I understand that. Because that's basically what you know, filmmaking teaches you that this you know, you got hours of getting set up, and then you go, "Yo, you're on now." Shoot a couple of scenes. Okay, catch you later in a couple of hours. We'll let you know. Go sit down in your caravan, you know, or your camper van. Uh, but the whole idea that you know that um, Hulk Hogan was going to be John Wayne or Brad Pitt or George uh, Clooney, right? In the 90s it's just or even bruce willis right because bruce willis was great uh and he's not of that caliber and like i'll, I'll put on this uh, and i thought that was funny to think that and the, uh, the other reasons undertaker says talks about that that's why i played that um trailer be- i mean the clip before when it comes to intergalactic confrontation no one can beat chef ramsay excellent work ramsay What's next? Why didn't you try relaxing? But now he's about to land in a place even he isn't prepared for. Suburbia. Get to know the locals. Blend in. How do you know which ones are the right ones? You have to squeeze it a bit. Uh, wow, I found a good one. Here, they have strange ways of fighting. You got any idea what we're gonna do to you? Let me guess. You're gonna power my face. What are you nuts? It's the nineties. We're gonna sue you. They have bizarre means of protection. There are dangers he's never seen. Oh! 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 So you'd better not fake him out. Must be a K-7 force field. I'll break you out of there. <laughs> Glad I could help. Or take him on. <laughs> For Hulk Hogan, it's no game. <laughs> Do you belong to some kind of army? Or do you just go around doing good like some kind of superhero? Hulk Hogan, Christopher Lloyd. I was frozen today! Suburban Commando. My cat! <laughs> my cat! That's not my cat! Oh. So, you know, cheap, cheap cheesy laughs kind of thing. Um, but, you know, it's comedy, you know, as you can see. An interstellar hero from a distant world visits Earth and tries to fit in with them, fit in with a mundane yet kind suburban family, right? So, but Hulk doesn't have the, he's, he's a, has the body of a wrestler, but he does not have the chops of an actor, right? And you can see it like when he's, he's just delivering one-liners, that's all he's doing. And, um, but, you really can't, you know, he's just a name kind of thing. Like he brings that whole wrestling thing, but he's not going to be your, you know, like your serious acting chops type thing. And that's, I mean, like a lot of wrestlers have done that, right? Like uh, Dwayne, Dwayne The Rock is a new one who's basically stepped into that scene. You got uh, Snickety, Snickety, Nicky Snickety, uh, John Cena, right? Just so John Cena's got a... a a movie he's part of right now. Did we play that last week? Um, let me let me bring that up and then we'll move on to the next one. So where is he? And of course, John's done really well for himself in the sense that you know he's been given um, particular 
uh, roles that actually suit him. You know that like he's and I think it kind of um, works for him, right? He's not trying. He's he's having a laugh at it, unlike um, Hulk at the time was like being too serious with the whole idea of that. Now, I think is it Vacation Friends? Uh, what is it called? Uh, Snickety. Um, man, it's, I hate it when I can't remember. Um, actor, come on, which one was it? It's not Argyle. It's like um, Freelance. I think it's Freelance. To freelance no not freelance um something snickety yeah let me see if i can find it through the snickety but yeah john's done really well i mean like he's you know he's um i like like if you watch him in uh yeah i can't even find it uh but and i don't know why it's not even it's this movie Right, so why isn't this movie coming up? Was it train wreck? Yeah, Ricky Snickety, right? So let's have a look at this. So this is the one I was thinking about, right? So this is coming out this year. So a bit of fun. All right. Another wrestler movie. I mean actor. Snicky, what up, man? Are you serious? I have someone call me when you get out of surgery, all right? You should drive out there. Ricky's been there for you guys your whole lives. The devil's in the details, my friend. It worked. Atlantic City, here we come. What we got? Ricky's cancer's back. Why does it have to be cancer? Won't everybody get worried? Yeah. And that's going to take us right into the World Series. This is a really good idea for Ricky a the, the best friend we've mm. never had. Mm. My baby's going to be born six weeks early. I was born six weeks early. Oh, yeah. I want to know where the hell you guys were tonight. We called every yeah, hospital and there was no... Like, I mean, seriously, like... You know, he goes, uh, you know... Uh, if you... And it's, I mean, it's a joke, right? Because that's what comedy is. You take a very serious thing and you make, make it into laugh. And, uh, you know, make people laugh about it. So it actually takes the seriousness out of it. But you know it's serious. So that's a classic little line right there. It's like, you know, they're looking at each other. I'm always born six months early in the game. You know, it's it's perfect. The timing, everything on that is perfect. Uh, whoever wrote that is, you know, that line has got to be awarded, right, for that. Uh, delivering such a – I mean, let's have a look at that again, right? So delivering that line in that way is just awesome. The best friend we never had. Mm. My baby's gonna be born six weeks early. I was born six weeks early. Oh, yeah. I wanna know. You know, it's like, it's basically premature, right? Uh, and uh, premature births are not a laughing matter. And, you know, it's like very serious. Like, um, I remember like um, my nephew being born with a hole in his heart. Like, serious. It, like, it was devastating for the family and uh, all the times they had to run up to the. Um, What's it called? Air, it's not, Starship, Starship Children's Hospital, right? From here, like every, like basically just all the time going up in the first early, um, early couple of years, right? And um, just operations upon operations. And it's like for that moment to take away some, uh, make a human out, it's really cool because I think you need that in comedy. Uh, you know, I mean, you need comedy in that moment because it's like something serious like that just to like uh, uh, you know and people people go like oh oh you know uh, you can't you talk about that i can't make a joke about it because it's such a listen man that's when you do need humor right because it just takes a bite and the uh, the pain away for a moment and then you get you know out of the scene and it's uh out of the situation and it just helps and that's what comedy is supposed to do Right, take a really serious moment and make you laugh about it, and not make you feel pain in that moment. I think that's really cool. So let's get back. I know where the hell you guys were tonight? We called every hospital, and there was no record of a Ricky Stanicky. You know, all we did was tell one lie hundreds and hundreds of times over many, many years. If the truth does come out, my marriage is over. What if we hire an actor to play Stanicky? Rock hard, ride. 
this is well this was saying this is a, such a great plot for um for a story right because it's like you, you be, you've tied these guys have told lies for decades to their you know significant others wives girlfriends whatever that there's this guy that they go and see and they use as an excuse to get away from serious things when they like don't want to go to certain things with the with their partners they can get away together and go and have a good time and i you know now x-rated rock and roll impersonated i do a whole act wall to wall top to bottom jizz jams thanks for coming out tonight ladies and gentlemen so horny to be here this is a really bad idea <laughs> Oh, Jesus. I've been cold turkey in the booze. Ricky Snicky's in the program, remember? Oh, Rod. It's not what you think it is. It's just piss. I'm a hyper every time. Now my mother I want you to. I think this is why I'd rather watch a John Cena movie because he just, even though he does the action movies, I'd rather watch this because I think he he's more down to earth than this, right? And it, it's just like he's laughing at himself. He's taking, you know, he's not taking himself seriously, I should say, not laughing at himself, but not think, taking things seriously because then he'll go and do something like Freelance, which is a full on action movie and it's all serious. But then he turns around and does this. And I think that sort of humanizes uh, John Cena to everybody, like to his fans, right? Because I mean, like he's been like, you know, the face for so many years, as they say, and, and uh, in wrestling that now, People can see him as as a normal person, and I think it's something really cool. I mean, I can't I can't say the same for Rob, right? I can't I see him as like something really dastardly, you know, someone who I just could would not trust, right? But John, I could, you know, and if I if I was a friend with John, I'd be like, yeah, I can trust this dude. The Rock feels like he's a two faced dude, you know, and same especially same to you know um, Hulk Hogan as well, um, Prime. So another another cool movie that just basically gets ruined by being a stream on a stream, right? Which is why, like, I I, I back the idea of uh, like with Monkey Man, right? With Jeff Patel's movie, which was going to Netflix, but um, what's his name? Ah, uh, freaking forgot now. Um, Peel, right? Jordan Peel. Is it Jordan Peel or the other guy? Right, who basically bought it and said, "Now, no, no, I'm going to come in and we're going to make, move, put money into this. My studio is going to put money into this and take it to the cinema." And I'm so freaking glad for that because I want to see, I want to see Monkey Man at the friggin' movies. Right, like I said, there's two movies I want to see this year now: uh, Monkey Man and the other one which I have, we, which we looked at earlier, which is Boy Kills World. Right, that movie. And Monkey Man is a must if you're a if you're a dude, right? If you're watching this, a dude. But also, if you're a fan of, you know, and I know a lot of ladies like action heroes and handsome young man, and middle aged man, whatever, right? And also older man. So nobody, you know, if you make movies like this, you're going to get audiences from the female and the male going to see with it, see it, right? And not only that, if, if something like Ricky Snickety, right? Snacky, right? Is a movie that is needed in the theaters right now, right? Instead, it's at home box office. It's like, as we like just used to say in the, the old days, it's HBO, right? It's in, it's on this little screen in front of me. It's not in the cinema. And here's the thing. You've got John Cena in this movie. Right, let's get rid of the boy in his world. I mean, kills world. You got John Cena, you got Zach Ephraim, right? Big name guys, you know, people love him, right? Uh, you know, he's handsome, can't say he's not. So, you know, and he's, you know, girls like him. And, and here's the thing young girls who were 16, 17 when he was pop star whatever was he pop star was it he pop star i think so right and he, you know on um disney and all that grew up with him and now he's a middle-aged dude so now they're also middle-aged ladies and they're living out their fantasies as well in in, in the sense like i'm not trying to like you know i'm living out their fantasies by seeing him as an action hero this is how people 
uh, grow and how they like the entertainment. So, like I said, like I used to, you know, I didn't watch John Cena a lot, but I did enjoy what John Cena wrestling. You know, you can't see me. However, now I get to see John Cena in a movie and he's, you know, making full of himself, laughing himself, enjoying it, being with these other actors, having fun, you know. And I think by by putting these huge name act, actors movies that are like really cool on a streamer is doing injustice to the theaters who would enjoy that money coming in for people who are making movies like this from producers and stuff like that stories that are really cool these this is a this is a story that i would love to have written right you know because it's got a really cool twist it's got a really cool interesting plot it's got great name actors attached to it and it's fun you know, and, and and the idea, it's written well. The characters, you know, you've got a guy who they've, you know, they're made up, right? Who has been an excuse for them to get away from things, uh, you know, and now they bring him in and yet he becomes more lovable than they are. And now he's the, you know, he's a, he's the main attraction and then up in the background and he's taking all the you know accolades and stuff and they, he's getting all the you know best jobs or whatever and you're like screw that guy how dare he you know and then you go how do you you know bring it back around and that's good storytelling there's good plot lines and this is what is is missing in cinema you know and i think um by then taking this list to a streamer, you just lost $100 million easy, right? Because here's the thing, like I mentioned, men and women will go see this movie. Men will go for the laughs. Ladies will go for the romance and the handsome man. Get it? That's how that's how it's always worked. And, you know, we, I've talked about Aquaman. And, you know, a male friend of mine said it, right? Um, you know, um, Captain Jack. Um, sorry. Uh, well, we just call him the captain, right? And he basically said, um, you know why it made a million dollars? Aquaman made a million dollars? Because it's just a moment while taking his shirt off. All the ladies went back, rewatched it, rewatched it, rewatched it, right? To the cinema. That's why it made it. And this is something, this this sounded like a woke ideologues don't understand. That woman like handsome muscular men playing action hero roles, being good fathers, being caring because that's what they want themselves and their lives to be have. Right? Guys want to be like them, women want to be married to them. That's how that's how we've always had. It's not about sexism, it's just reality. And that's why we have such trashy, rubbish um, movies out here now, because that. People have lost the idea about what was supposed to be fun and entertaining. And so we we end up with rubbishy, virtue signaling, political crap that nobody really wants to watch. And so we destroy an entire industry, the cinema, right? The theaters, the, uh, the people that work there, uh, the, pe the people actually, like during COVID, right? Uh, my, my own cinema here is, like spent uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars upgrading and now hardly anybody's in there. That's money lost. So when I say that these movies are trash, they're not only just trash because they're trash, they're trash because um, it's not helping that industry, right? And we're going to look on Friday night at how AI is going to destroy that industry more. And and um because you know with uh is it sora or something and i'm and i'm not very smart on these technical things but i know where i am one of these as i mentioned earlier i'm one of those people who like to see five six steps ahead when it comes to technology because that's how i've trained myself to think like what if what if what if and every writer who's worth their salt would always ask what if what if what if right if this happens what if what does that lead to, right? And it's about inciting, inc like for us as writers, we're taught about inciting incidences, right? Um, 
what incites the incident, right? If somebody hits you, what are you going to react to? Or if somebody says something nasty to you, how do you react? Have you already made up your mind in that situation? Have you told, have you storified it in your head, right? If somebody hits me, I'm going to do this. And this is what I'm going to say. This is my reaction. And that's how you write, tell stories as well. And I think cinema is getting destroyed by woke, by, uh, um, by uh, politics in it. And listen, I'm very political myself, right? The sense that like uh, I think about these things happening around the world and politics and all that, but I don't. I try to very. I don't. I try to keep it very minimal when it comes to my story writing. Uh, a lot of that has to do, you know, has to do with wanting to just be entertaining in my storytelling, you know, um, and try to really try to be a more of an entertainer uh, and a good storyteller rather than trying to force feed what my belief system is into the stories because not everybody who's going to read my story or my comic books is going to be have the same mindset as me have the same experiences as me and so you sh you know when you do tell a story try to tell you know you got to think about everybody in the sense that like what if i was just coming to read it and i don't even know what this thing was would i enjoy it that sort of thing so you just kind of and, and also you know I'm writing from like uh, for all our uh, like Pine Studio side of things, apart from one or two, they're all mature reader, like teen plus books, right? Uh, so one of them is actually R18 because it's just a horror book that's, you know, it's just gore, lots of violence and stuff because it's about death, it's about hell, it's about heaven, it's about people being atrocious end of their lives, you know, because it's about a soul collector, right, from hell. So you're not going to have a you know happy happy joy joy storyline in that, and so I think you need to you know I, I just I just feel sorry for all, all these people who have invested so much money in upgrading, try to get people into the cinemas and then movies or and um, streamers like uh, like Netflix, you know Disney. It's basically I mean like um, Mark Ruffalo who. As a person I don't like, but he said this week that like net um, Disney Plus basically destroyed the magic of cinema and the and the characters they were building up in Avengers, right? And we'll talk about that at a later time. So on you know comics and rambling, I think that's on Thursday. Been waiting for the noise to die down So I could have some time to think Think back to when I wanted to be with